Methylenthranolate is the main flavor component of various foods and candies, and its most notable use is in grape Kool-Aid. It is naturally occurring in various species of grapes, and interestingly enough, it is also used as a bird repellent. So here is a list of the chemicals that I used. Unfortunately, there's no really easily accessible alternatives to concentrated sulfuric acid. However, instead of DCM, you can use another water immiscible solvent like ether or chloroform. So we start off by adding 2 grams of anthranilic acid. This was followed by the addition of 50 milliliters of methanol. With rapid stirring, 5 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid was added. In this reaction, the purpose of the sulfuric acid is to act as a catalyst. Sulfuric acid is used because it's a very strong acid with a very low water content. This reaction is in equilibrium and adding water to it will favor the reverse reaction. A condenser column was then attached and a reflux was carried out. With strong stirring, the reaction mixture was refluxed for about an hour and a half. The reaction occurring is shown above. This is a classic Fischer esterification reaction where the oxygen of the methanol attacks the carbonyl of the anthranilic acid and the OH is kicked off as water. This is why it's required to have an acid catalyst because the OH can't leave on its own and the acid will protonate it to form water so it can leave. As I said before, this is an equilibrium reaction because the acid can act with water to hydrolyze the ester back to the anthranilic acid. Optionally, if you have access to molecular sieves, you can use those to pick up water and shift the equilibrium to the products. To a large separatory funnel was added 100 milliliters of 10% sodium bicarbonate solution. Once the reaction mixture was only warmed to the touch, it was added to the separatory funnel. Immediately upon the addition, the sodium bicarbonate reacts with the unreacted anthranilic acid as well as the sulfuric acid catalyst. The mixture was given a few minutes to react and settle down. The round bottom flask was washed with a small amount of sodium bicarbonate solution. The separatory funnel was swirled to mix the two layers so that when we cap and shake, not too much gas is produced. So then, as usual, the separatory funnel was capped, shaken, and vented frequently. This was done until it appeared that no more CO2 was being produced. Then, 50 more milliliters of the sodium bicarbonate solution was added. This was also capped, shaken, and vented. Then, when 50 more milliliters of sodium bicarbonate solution was added, not many bubbles were formed, indicating that the neutralization was complete. So now it's time to extract our methylenthranolate from the water layer, so we start by adding 50 milliliters of DCM. Then, just as in the other step, we cap, shake, and vent frequently. Then, the separatory funnel is placed back on the ring stand and the layers are allowed to separate. You'll notice that the upper layer might be a little white, but that's okay. Once the layers have separated, we can drain the lower DCM layer. This extraction procedure was carried out two more times using 50 milliliters of DCM each time. After the extractions, your water layer might be cloudy and white like this, but that's fine. The extracted DCM layers were then transferred back into a 250 milliliter SEP funnel. To this was added 75 milliliters of saturated sodium chloride solution. The purpose of this step is to dry the DCM by osmotically pulling the water into the aqueous phase. Then, as with any other separatory funnel step, we cap, shake, and vent. The lower DCM layer is then drained into calcium chloride to further dry it. The mixture was swirled around and then let stand for several minutes. Our DCM solution was then filtered directly into a round bottom flask. You don't necessarily need to filter off the calcium chloride, but if you decant, you might get a little bit of calcium chloride in your final product. The calcium chloride salt at the bottom of the Erlenmeyer is washed with a small amount of DCM. Then, a simple distillation is set up to remove the DCM. It is important to note that you probably don't have pure DCM with your product, and there's probably some methanol in there, so when you distill it off, it will come off azeotropically and you'll get a mixture of DCM and methanol. So if you recycle your solvents, be aware of this. After the distillation, I was left with a small amount of yellow oil. This was transferred to a small dram vial. After storing the dram vial in a freezer for several minutes, the product completely solidified. This is because the freezing point, or melting point, of methylenthranolate is 24 degrees Celsius. 
It is very close to room temperature, so depending on how warm your room is, it may or may not stay a solid.